first speaker for the evening is Nick Blanchard Wright. Nick earned his BA in biology from Reed College in Portland, Oregon, where he was also a licensed operator of the most fun nuclear reactor in the world. I guess there's a competition for that. <laughs> He's currently lead engineer at Tembu, an internet of things startup that distinguishes itself by actually making useful stuff. <laughs> And Nick, come on up to the stage. Thank you. Good evening. <laughs> Can I get a, a show of hands, please? How many of you would say your intelligence is above average? <laughs> Don't be modest. This is for science. <laughs> okay, interesting. Uh, how many of you have ever bit your own tongue or tripped over your own feet? <laughs> Thank you. To explain this contradiction, uh, <laughs> I would like you to imagine that you are an early mammalian ancestor and you engage in foraging and caching behavior. <coughs> but you also indulge in the occasional stealing behavior. So if you see one of your conspecifics caching some food, you follow them, and you dig it up, and you eat it. And you grow fat and happy, and they starve to death. Aww. And being dead is anti-correlated with reproductive success. <laughs> so the fitness advantage is yours. But then one day, you're following another poor sucker, and suddenly they trip over their own tail and they drop the food and bite their own tail in retaliation and shriek in pain and run away. <laughs> and this doesn't really make a lot of sense, but it strikes you as bad. So you bail and you go steal from someone a little less crazy. <laughs> but now, turn it around, look at it from the other side. Suppose you're the one who freaked out. You know there's no real danger. You know you're just an idiot. <laughs> So, after you calm down a little, you go back and you retrieve your food. And suddenly, look what's happened. Thanks to your random incompetence, you've outsmarted the thief. <laughs> you see, natural selection is very good at coming up with countermeasures to predictable behaviors. Uh, caching leads to stealing, stealing leads to decoys. But there's no countermeasure for senseless random inputs. <laughs> we term these arbitrary seemingly self-defeating <laughs> utility masking behaviors. <laughs> Wait for it. Or dumbass. And this comes in two parts. The weak dumbass hypothesis says the more intelligent the organism, the more frequent and egregious your mistakes must be to keep it costly for your competitors to model you. Put simply, the smarter you are, the stupider. <laughs> and it turns out, we can quantify this. So we searched YouTube <laughs> for stupid animals. And we focused on domesticated species because they're the best observed. And when we compare the number of hits to the encephalization quotient for each species, we find they're almost perfectly correlated. <laughs> now, we wanted to include humans in this analysis, but they need to meet the domestication criteria. So we asked ourselves, which humans are most like pets? So, as you can see, dumbassery is strong across species, but what about within species? Well, here's a thought experiment. Let's assume it's true for humans that smarter individuals are stupider. What would a dumbass civilization look like? Well, we'd stereotype our geniuses as eccentric, absent-minded, and prone to tragic accidents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or, 
too soon. <laughs> Our most celebrated entertainers would be gifted buffoons. We'd have large, powerful cultural institutions founded on complete nonsense. <laughs> So, let's talk about the Flynn effect. This is the steady, steady, globally reported rise in IQ over time. Dumbass theory predicts a concomitant increase in stupidity over time. And that is exactly what we find. <laughs> and this brings us to the strong dumbass hypothesis, which says that the evolution of general intelligence is driven by a virtuous cycle of dumbassery and paranoia. And that's because of intentionality bias. Evelyn Rossett at Boston University found when you give people an ambiguous phrase like, she set the house on fire, their first thought isn't accident, it's arson. <laughs> she set the house on fire. And this is a rational bias to have because historically it was true. Before the first dumbass mutation, there were no accidents because every living thing was just good at its job. <laughs> A fact that's still true today for cognitively simple organisms. <laughs> but intelligent species make mistakes. And thanks to intentionality bias, you can recognize your own mistakes as mistakes. But everyone else just seems to be scheming in ways you can't comprehend. So, selective pressure favors greater intelligence with which to invent intentions for all these dumbass behaviors. But intelligence increases your stochastic incompetence, so your competitors develop bigger brains to model you. And so on forever. In a Machiavellian death spiral of increasingly brilliant morons. And now we can answer one of the great mysteries of comparative cognition. Uh, if there are any marine biologists in the audience, you might be familiar with Lily's Paradox, which asks, if dolphins are so smart, why aren't they in charge? <laughs> because the ocean inhibits the bathroom. Cetaceans can and do make social gaps, but they're limited by their aquatic environment in physical blunders, right? You can't trip a dolphin. <laughs> so, I propose to place a breeding group of dolphins in an environment full of painful, but conspicuously avoidable obstacles. <laughs> and I confidently predict within a few generations, they will be measurably both more intelligent and less trusted. Thank you very much.